folks. Welcome back to Dom Africa. This is Chris once again. Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris White Reports. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm all choked up there. <laughs> welcome back, Chris White Reports. This is Chris on the Indaba Africa Channel, part of the Indaba Broadcasting Network. It's Wednesday, June 15th. Wow, almost halfway through the year. I feel like I've been robbed. That's two years in a row. Somebody call SAPS. Never mind, they never respond, so we don't need SAPS. But uh, today, my special guest at a special time is none other than the conscious character, Ernst von Sell. Ernst, this time, the links to your Twitter account and your YouTube channel are embedded in the description of the video how's it going oh it's got you on mute oh uh, well uh chris thank you very much for having me on again always good to be here on your prestigious channel and it's always nice to see your chat again they're always very friendly and very interesting in regards to their comments and questions so i'm uh, really looking forward to the chat and as i said before we went live your background seems to be expanding in complexity well you <laughs> seem to have a, a a painting of a caracal on your wall now uh, yes, that's uh, that's actually something I I was lucky enough to be able to pick up at a market here uh, in South Africa. I just saw it there and I bought it. So I don't have the money to have something like that <laughs> custom made, but it's uh, it might as well have been custom made. Yeah, you ought to reach out to Shink, the guys in Bloemfontein who did my caricature from the Rugby World Cup. Unfortunately, they just raised their prices the first time in three years, um, five days ago. I didn't get my order in, but um, they do characters. They could probably do a caricature of you as a conscious character, very respectful, <laughs> and you might use this for your channel. But but welcome back to the program. Yeah. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in. Very kind words of you, Ernst. I don't know if my channel is all that, but I definitely know it's shadow banned. That much I can prove. <laughs> the rest of the stuff, man, those are very kind words from you, so thank you for that. But let's see. Um, you had contacted me and said, hey, um, do you want to talk about the the lawsuit regarding the union flag of South Africa mm -hmm. the, and the case that after reform had? And then uh, I think that was either when I was headed to the UK or in the UK or coming, I'm not sure. And then scheduling conflict. So here we are now. It's been a few weeks. It's still a newsworthy mm -hmm. topic to talk about, plus a bunch of other cases you're involved in. For those who don't know, uh, Ernst works for Alfred Forum now. When we first started chatting, he wasn't working for Alfred Forum, but that's something that he's doing now. So... Um, that lawsuit, that's about free speech, is it not? Right. Yeah. So, Chris, maybe I should just give a little bit of a of background. Yeah, so please in, do. Uh, because a lot of people are asking, I remember when the when the court case was hitting the news earlier this year, everyone was asking, why now? Why is Afri Forum going to court now? And it's actually a very long path. Uh, so back in 2019, all the way back, I mean, that's before COVID. So that feels like decades ago. Back in 2019, all those decades ago, um, uh, the Equality Court ruled, or well, firstly, the Nelson Mandela Foundation went to the Equality Court to have the old South African flag declared hate speech and banned. Um, and then the Nelson Mandela Foundation um, uh, added Afri Forum as a respondent in their, in their court papers. So Afri Forum was basically, to put it in layman's terms, invited to be part of the court case. And we accepted because uh, to not accept would be a betrayal of our, our values as a pro-free speech organization. And uh, Just, then, so, Sorry, answer very quickly. So, so you were invited to be a litigant, not, not a defendant. Um, Joe, I don't know if, if the same uh, terminology is it, I mean, like friend, friend, amicus, like friend of the court or something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly what the term would be, but we were, um, we were invited to be a part of the case. That's how I understand. It. I can't remember exactly what, the, but you, you weren't charged. Term. You weren't charged with violation or anything. No, no, oh, okay. No, no, no it sounds, forum, no, it no. sounds like an amicus, like a friend of the court. Yeah. You're, you're going to, okay. You're yeah. going to contribute it, to the I argument. I think that's, I think that's, uh, that's the correct term. Yeah. So basically we weren't being charged for anything. It wasn't the Nelson Mandela foundation versus Afri forum. Okay. It that's, was the Nelson okay. Mandela foundation versus freedom of speech or versus the whole South African flag with Afri forum as part of the case being invited to be part. And that was in 2019. And then uh, that K uh, Equality Court ruled in 2019 that the old South African flag should be banned and that it should be declared hate speech. And uh, then uh, Afri Forum already in 2019 applied for appeal uh, to appeal that ruling. But then uh, only in 2020, earlier this year, did we hear that we are now going to get our day in court. Um, so that's how we get to 2020 this wasn't just kali krill waking up one morning in in may or in um no i think it was in may or was it no it was yeah it was uh, in may 
waking up and deciding yeah this week we are going to go fight for the old south african flag yeah no i think that i think that's a fair point people need to pay attention yeah. first off when is julius malema going to be convicted for assaulting a senior police officer that case just came that's from three years ago as well we're still waiting for mm. resolution from cases from five years ago. The the court system moves at a glacial pace, and I think that's a generous description of South Africa. The only time it moves at a fast pace is when a white South African has been accused of racism individually, and then they're locked away in jail and gang raped, you know, overnight. So, but other than that, the cases seem to move pretty slowly. That was a facetious comment from my audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Chris, I think that's very important context for people to understand because I know a lot of people were confused about the timing and that in very very short terms we don't have any control over the timing and um what would have made it even worse is is if we were uh, uh informed in 2022 by the court of the supreme court of appeal that um oh yeah your your uh, court date for the old south african flag case or freedom of speech case is uh, on this date this year and then afri forum responded by saying oh, i don't think uh, we we don't we don't feel that strongly about that case anymore and just dropped it because the timing wasn't right or whatever no no you can't you can't uh, you can't drop reason. this free speech is yeah, risk, you but, can't. no but let me let me add one thing here very quickly just to put mm. this in light because this came to light yesterday and i reported on it for those paying attention in march of 2020 the unelected unaccountable capricious National Coronavirus Command Council issued dictates that were unconstitutional and unlawful, many of which were declared so by the North Haltang High Court, and they still march on with an appeal and continue to oppress South Africans. One of those was an unscientific cigarette ban by Nkosazani Dalai Mizuma. And I said so at the time, and I said, this is unwarranted. I said, what is she getting the sun goma together? Are they tossing the bones? There's no science behind this. Actually, at that time, there had been two studies out of France in the early days of the spicy cough era that indicated that people, strangely, who smoked were, were less susceptible. Now, I don't know if studies were carried after that, but that was at the time. And so they went ahead and banned cigarettes, and we all know why, because the illicit trade was very profitable for certain politicians. But anyway, so that case was determined or that case was held unconstitutional by a lower court and now finally two years and three months later the supreme court of appeals has just declared that there was no rational basis no scientific evidence whatsoever for Nkosazani Dalai Mizuma to ban cigarette tobacco sales in South Africa the damage it did to tobacco farmers the domestic tobacco market and I don't like cigarettes people should know that and the damage it did to law and order is incalculable and it's now two and a half years later but here's the thing politicians like Nkosazani Dalai Mizuma and Cyril Ramaphosa and Joe Biden will intentionally violate the law knowing the slow pace of the courts. We did the same thing here in the States where the Biden administration sought to coerce 90 million Americans into getting jabs against their moral convictions and against their desires. Some of them wanted the jab, many didn't. Tens of millions of people who at risk of losing their jobs because of an unconstitutional illegal decision by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration to force all employers with 100 more employees to have employees fully jabbed. They knew it was unlawful. They went ahead and did it anyway. Tens of millions of people against their moral religious convictions and their concerns about the jab got jabbed. And then only later, three months later, did the Supreme Court strike it down. So it takes a bit longer in South Africa, but that's kind of a wrap up. Just let people understand this is why these mm -hmm. cases take so long. Anyway, so sorry about that. Answer. I thought it was important to share that. Yeah, no, Chris, that's valuable context because that, that adds to the uh, to why I wanted to give that context in the beginning. People need to understand we have little control over the timing of these things. So it's not like uh, we uh, we specifically tailor uh, tailor made the, the timing of this case. But um, timing aside, uh, freedom of speech is uh, to an important right, as you also stated, to uh, just leave to the whims of, oh, it's not right, the right time. I think we're going to leave this one. Because the interesting thing here is if you say that uh, Afri Forum should leave this case for whatever reason, whether that be it's not the right time or it's not uh, it's too controversial or whatever, that means you're ceding that ground. So the next time uh, when, so let's say you flee to a less controversial uh, piece of ground, you're not going to fight the most controversial fight. That means when you lose, you then automatically lose the most controversial fight. Then the second most controversial fight that you retreated to automatically becomes the most controversial fight. And you're going to have to use that same logic again, that yeah, it's too controversial. Then you flee again, you retreat again. In the end, you, you lose so much ground that there's no more less controversial ground to flee to. And then the water has risen too high and then you drown. 
Well, not just that. You've allowed a precedent to be set. And precedents right. are, they're not sacrosanct in jurisprudence, but they're very important jurisprudence around the world. Once mm -hmm. a precedent has been set, it's very hard to overturn. I mean, look at the United States. The, the Burger Court in 1972 or 1973, came down with the Roe versus Wade decision, which illegally, unconstitutionally inserted the federal government into the affairs of the 50 individual states and four territories, prohibiting or, or allowing, you know, on-demand abortion. That is not something specifically enumerated in the powers to the federal government. It's not their purview. It's the purview of Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York, Nevada, and so on. They illegally and constitutionally put that in place. And in the ensuing 49 years, over 50 million Americans have been killed in the womb because of that precedent that was set. That is about to be overturned, or so we're being led to believe. And now it's leading all sorts of demonic leftist violence. So allowing a precedent on ground that should never be ceded is a bad idea. The reason Israel exists is because if they lose, it's game over. And that's why they exist. They don't give up that ground. And on an important issue like freedom of speech, you shouldn't give up the ground. We've already seen ridiculous things. Look, I have real issues with South Africa's laws. I mean, calling someone the K-word is impolite, it's rude, it's disrespectful, and frankly, it's probably racist too. But it's not a crime. And the fact that South Africa classifies as a crime shows you it's not a free country. People who are harmed by words are people that really need to have their egos checked at the door. We have children starving to death in Eastern Cape because of malfeasance and incompetence by the ANC, returning 62 million of rand money allocated to them to pay for food for small children and infants. 15 children starved to death, acute malnutrition because of their incompetence. That's a real issue, that's a concern. The storm drains not clean in KwaZulu-Natal, causing extensive damage. People allowed to live in marginal spaces where they're not supposed to be living in floodplains by authorities who look the other way and people die and homes are washed away. These are real issues. South Africa is a bankrupt country. It's a failed state. These are real issues. Um, people complaining about someone calling something or complaining about a flag that was misappropriated and stolen by other people for different purposes is just wrong. That's kind of where I sit on this. Mm. Well, Chris, there's something else to add there as well. And I'm glad you mentioned the precedent because the thing is, once the precedent that's going to be set with this case or that was set with the banning of the, the old South African flag in 2019 was that if a symbol is offensive, it can be and should be banned. Well, the, now, the, the letters BLM are offensive to me. They should be banned. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people find the ANC flag quite offensive. I that's find that very that offensive. <laughs> and Kasatu, while you're at in the South African Communist Party, the whole tripartite alliance offends my personal <laughs> sensibilities. It attacks my culture. Ban them all. <laughs> mm. no, that's one of the points that I made in one of the interviews, because then I said um, uh, a lot of people might look at the, the ANC. If you say, uh, well, the old South African flag, uh, all it stands for is just uh, uh, apartheid and racial oppression. There's no context to, to use it in. Firstly, it's from 1928, much older than apartheid. So it meant many different things to many different people. Sure. And yeah. if you use that logic, then the ANC flag uh, stands for the murdering of protesting mine workers at Marikana. It stands for uh, record levels of corruption. It stands for the life is a demeni uh, it's, tragedy. It stands for... Or it stands for necklacing and the murder of tens of thousands of Zulu and KwaZulu Natal in the 1980s and 1990s. That's what it stands for. Listen, I mean, I, okay, I'm not South African, but the Union flag to me is the Union flag. It was an effort at reconciliation amongst the people governing South Africa. And it was an attempt to bring in the Free State, the Orange Free State, the Transvaal, Boer Republic and the, the Cape Colony, all these things brought together. And you can even see the individual flags on this flag. Now there's a bit more meaning to it, but I mean, that was really the intent as I understand it as a non-South African. What did I get wrong? No, the thing is, um, Chris, the problem with uh, what we have here is the fact that uh, on one side, uh, we are very interpretive and very lenient in regards to, for example, how we treat a song like Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer. But on the other side, when you look at the old South African flag, then it's all a, a black and white case. Then it is, there's no, uh, uh, there's no uh, gray areas. There's no nuance. It's all just, this is a bad symbol and there's no uh, argument for uh, not banning it. But when it comes to uh, the, the singing of Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer, a song that's literally calling for the murder of an entire racial or ethnic group yeah. and uh, it's also a song that's sung by a person or a political leader that can't even uh, pledge under oath that he will never call for the slaughtering uh, of white people then then we dance around the issue and I, by we i mean uh, many yeah. in the commentariat and many in the south african columnist party 
um, they used to uh, they usually uh, dance around the issue and say, oh, well, we need to look at the history of the song. It's a metaphor. We need to uh, blah, 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 look at all these uh, subjective things. And But when it comes to, to other symbols, then it's a very concrete and uh, uh, rock solid case, uh, according to them. But what people don't understand, and I think this is also very important, is that the spectrum of human offense, the spectrum of things that people can find offensive is literally infinite. It's endless. Uh, there's, uh, you can think of anything in the world. I can guarantee you there's one, at least one person out there out of 8 billion people that finds that offensive. Um, the fact that you, uh, uh, let's say you, your favorite food is pizza, or your favorite food is burgers. There's going to be someone out there that finds that deeply offensive. Or the fact that you eat meat, someone's going to find that deeply offensive. Uh, the, it's the spectrum is endless. So if we start setting that precedent, the the, the slippery slope that that we then enable is so long and so vast, it's going to lead to some very ugly stuff. And it's 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 actually it's disheartening to see the amount of people that don't see that bigger picture. And just a, a last point there. What it sometimes feels like is when I go into the, when I went into these debates when this uh, court case was now ongoing and we're still waiting for the judgment. When I went on to debates regarding it, my opponents always took the stance of this is a very simple issue. There's not, not a lot of nuance that, and, and uh, the, this is a bad thing and bad things need to be banned. Why don't you want to ban bad things? And my problem when I go into that debate is I'm going into that debate already with one arm tied behind my back because I have to tell the audience and the panel I know you uh, are giving everyone just this rhetorical red meat. I mean, this is the easiest argument to make. Something is bad. We need to stop that bad thing. Well, there needs to be no more of that bad thing. Oh, yeah. Like, gun, to, like guns. Guns are bad. Yeah, guns, guns kill people, bad. please. Yeah. yeah. But, that's, but that's the thing. They have the easy side of the argument. I have to tell people, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look. We have to think a little bit abstract here. And the, the, the equivalent of that is me telling the audience, you can, you're going to have to resist that that red meat, that steak, and you're going to have to eat your vegetables. And I'm here to feed you your vegetables. That's why uh, our side of the argument is the right side, but it is the much more difficult side to, well, to articulate and debate. Essentially, what you're coming at is the angle you're coming at this from is, is, is the fascist, leftist, totalitarian state of perspective. Instead of a presumption of innocence, you're coming from, from a position of a presumption of guilt. You're, th this mm. is presumed to be guilty, presumed to be wrong. Listen, um, in America, you can burn the American flag. I find that highly offensive but it's allowed by the supreme court as an expression of free speech i find it highly offensive that colin kaepernick takes a knee during the national anthem and people say that's free speech in this case it's not he has an employment contract which requires him to stand and be present for the flag and so he violated his terms and conditions and so i can strike back against that it's not free speech you know you can't shout fire in a crowded theater Free speech is not, you know, dangerous speech. That's dangerous speech. Inciting riots, inciting violence, that's not allowed. It's, it's, it, there, there is nuance to this. But the bottom line is that when you go to attack symbols, it really shows fragile ego. And I don't want to hear you don't understand the oppression, this, that, and the other. I mean, listen to Julius Miller. may make fairy tales up about his mother and how as a little boy he suffered so much. He has no idea what suffering is. Trust me, he has no idea. This privileged little corrupt elite turd ball, Juju, has no idea. No, it's, 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 it's. This, this whole thing is really frustrating because it's happening on this side of the Atlantic. We see people who loot and burn and they go out and violate lockdown restrictions in states and we're told that it's okay because it's for racial equality. They're not going to get the spicy cough even though they're two feet apart with no mask on when the rest of us are locked in our homes or arrested for attending a church service where we sit in our own cars physically separated by 20 meters from the next car in a drive-in movie lot, arrested for going to an event like that with the windows up. It's just the cognitive dissonance, the intellectual dishonesty, and the same thing. Look, uh, Vicky Momberg and Penny Sparrow, two cases in South Africa. Vicky Momberg was nearly carjacked and robbed and the assailant was black and she was in shock. Police officer responded, a colored, as I recall, and a black police officer came to offer help. She was still in shock. She cussed out the black police officer and said, leave me alone, I'm not talking to you. She only wanted to talk to the colored police officer. She was forced to pay that gentleman something in the order of 15,000 US dollars to compensate him for his, his ego being insulted. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, what, if you're a law enforcement official, a military person, and your feelings are hurt because somebody calls you names, you're in the wrong line of work. You don't deserve compensation for doing your job or something like that. And then she was imprisoned as a felon. 
Now, the woman may very well have been a racist, but being a racist is not a crime. It's just bad, just bad manners and bad morals. Shouldn't be a crime. And then we see Penny Sparrow, who is hounded and, and attacked because she made a very rude and very disrespectful and arguably racist tweet. But you know what? If she wants to be stupid, you know, when people were stupid or said stupid things in the past, people didn't associate with them. They, 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 they comment on, they, they told people to stay away from them. They mock them. They shun them from the community, but not anymore. Now we have to turn to the courts to turn people's speech into crimes. When you're afraid of speech, you've already lost the argument and you don't know what true liberty is. That's my position. Mm. Well, uh, Chris, in regards to uh, the, uh, now that you mentioned there previously, the, the spicy cough and COVID, um, if you really think that the, the ba this banning of symbols and the banning of things that people find offensive is going to stop at the most offensive things, that is going to stop at the, the old South African flag, then you probably also believed in 2020 that the lockdown is only going to be 21 days. Oh, it's not. It's not, not what's, but no, but answer it was to get the hospitals ready. But let's see, mm. two and a half years later, the Charlotte McKexa Hospital is still burned down and destroyed. Uh, that hospital up there in Northwest Province is still burned down. Oh, yeah. And the Steve Biko Hospital in Pretoria just had its second fire in two weeks and more beds are out. So we have fewer intensive care beds in South Africa today than we had in 2019. Well done, ANC. You know, they're really good at destroying things. I have to say that. I have to give them a lot of credit. But back to the free speech thing, because I could go off for hours on the racketeering operation masquerading as a political party known as the Angry Naughty Children. Uh, but on free speech. So every form has gone back to court and you're waiting for a judgment now. And we have mm. no idea or we don't know when the judgment's going to come out. And this is at the Supreme Court of Appeal level? Mm. This is uh, at the Supreme Court of Appeal, yes. And uh, yeah, Chris, unfortunately, as with all the other court cases, um, I would have loved to say, well, the countdown is we will get our um, judgment on the 18th of mm. August, but uh, that's not how our, our system works. We have to wait. It could be next month. It could be next week uh, or it could be uh, next year. Uh, that's the that's how it works. I mean, it's a patience game and we have to wait. But the other thing is, as I uh, said to someone earlier today in an interview, um, I did an interview on Salah Media about the other case where Julius Malema is involved, the Kill the Boer case that we're also doing. Um, uh, and the, the host asked me whether I think uh, what Afri Forum would do if uh, Julius Malema and his, uh, and his party do delay tactics and try to uh, let this case drag on and in the end people uh, uh, lose patience and give up and then the, the case just disappears. And I told her, don't worry, uh, something that our members already know and that anyone that tries to drag out cases for, that, for those ends will learn is the fact that Afri Forum has uh, infinite patience. We are a very patient organization and we will wait until uh, uh, justice is served. We won't give up just because something is taking long or because uh, too much time has passed now and uh, it's become inconvenient to uh, keep fighting this fight. So that's, that I can assure you, Afri Forum won't do. Now, I, I think you know that Rob Hutchison comes on my program. We have a regular program called Answer the Question with Rob, uh, the Wise Bros, Chris and Rob. Uh, Rob and I haven't done it for several weeks because I was in London for the Sevens Tournament and then traveled to Texas to cover more rugby. And uh, last week we were supposed to do the program, but uh, at the last minute, literally just the 10 minutes before the broadcast, he begged off and apologized because he'd just been buried by a mountain of paperwork. Apparently, the Department of Health uh, has decided that they're going to accuse Dear SA of being a terrorist organization, undermining I democratic rule. So I broke that story. Not that many people were watching, but I broke that story. And then Rob went on everybody else's program and elaborate on it. So now it looks like I'm the Johnny come lately. I'm just sending him a message to make sure he's on tomorrow. But yeah, so Dear SA, because they are a civic organization that encourages public participation in the democratic process, are being termed a terrorist organization by a failed Department of Health who has nothing else in its quiver. They're out of arrows, and it's either racist or terrorist anytime you're losing the argument in U.S. or in South Africa. Isn't that interesting to see Dear SA called a terrorist organization? I'm, I'm still just like, you know, I'm not gobsmacked because I'm not surprised, but it's still, it's just, it's almost comical if it wasn't, if it, if it was only not true, you know? Mm. No, Chris, it's uh, it's the type of rhetoric that AfriForum has become used to uh, from the ANC government. All they can do is really smear their opponents as all these horrible things. But uh, uh, that's the thing is that uh, here's a rule of thumb when it comes to the ANC government. And I think uh, a lot of times it applies to uh, the, the Biden administration as well. You just look at what they call their opponents and then you, uh, you just turn it around. You just realize it's all projection. Yeah. And uh, from the ANC, that's very rich calling someone a, a terrorist organization.
um so yeah no that's uh that's the type of rhetoric that they that they stoop to but uh, it, it's like water off a duck's back um but that also shows that also shows why it's important to fight these types of freedom of speech fights because today it's the old south african flag that's being banned because it's offensive tomorrow it's the afri forum logo that's being banned because it's offensive they don't think that the anc won't stoop to that level that's the type of power that they want and that's what they're slowly moving towards tyranny doesn't uh, doesn't move at uh, 120 kilometers an hour tyranny moves at one little step at a time one centimeter at a time one millimeter at a time and uh, that's the ANC understands that very well. And I think this is something you're also aware of. It's the balance of forces. The ANC understands the balance of forces. Whatever they do, they always refer back to the balance of forces. So if the balance of forces is in their favor, they move forward. If the balance of forces switches against them, they sit back and wait oh and they change and the or they'll change tactics they'll they'll try yeah, to well, come, they at you from, come at you from a different angle well i mean speaking yeah. of this you know um it's the height of lunacy and height of stupidity and shows you how poorly informed most homo sapiens are and look if if there's uh seven and a half billion out there and i'm insulting seven hundred or seven billion of the seven and a half billion right now i'm gonna tell you what a lot of people are just dumbasses they're stupid they're easily manipulated they're sheep I mean, honestly, I did a video. I mean, I get back, I'm going to talk about the Tal Monument. That's what I'm talking about. But I did a video when I was in Houston last week. And in the video, uh, it was just a one minute short. And I said, hey, you know what? I arrived in Houston yesterday. It was 419 a gallon for, for regular gasoline. It was 530 in the morning. So I went to uh, Dean Chancey's place, got a few hours sleep, got up, came back over. And it was 429. It got up 10 cents in a couple hours. So I topped off. I ran around Houston that day, went to NASA, and then went out to the rugby. Came back and um, it was um, 4.35. So I got up in the morning to top off and um, the receipt wasn't working the machine. So I said two days in a row, I walked in. The guy said, could you fix your machine? Please print me a receipt because you know it's, it, there's no paper in it. It's two days in a row and nobody fixed it yesterday. He goes, no problem, sir. It's an Indian fellow. And I said, because um, we got lots of Indians here too. But anyway, I said, so I said, uh, I said, uh, and by the way, could you guys quit raising your fuel prices? I was just joking, being cheeky. And he goes, uh, sir, funny you should mention that. And then the owner comes out and he goes, uh, oh, you need, you need gasoline, you should get now. I said, why? because I'm raising the prices. And he walked outside and took the remote and raised the prices. So I did a video in which I said that without the Indian accents and all that nonsense. You know, I just said, you know, in 24 hours, the prices went up four times at this one station in Houston. And this is how quickly inflation occurs. That's all I said. Now, I did put on the video, Biden inflation bites hard, because that's what I call it. Uh, and then I got diatribes and paragraphs of responses on a short video that I spent a minute recording talking about how stupid I was about economics. I don't understand economics. What did I understand? All I said was the price went up. I didn't say it was because pipelines or Keystone or, or policies. It just shows you how stupid people are and how demonic they are. Now, let's go to the Tal Monument. Could you find a more diverse language on the planet? One whose origins comes from multiple continents, not just multiple cultural groups, from Europe, from Africa, from Indonesia, Asia. All of this comes together to form the language of Afrikaans. But because it was appropriated by the National Party and used in a way that many people felt oppressed and many people were oppressed, it's looked down upon by many racists and bigots today who blame the language or the people who speak the language. By the way, most people who speak Afrikaans aren't white. For those who don't know that, most first language speakers of Afrikaans are South African coloreds. Shocker there. In fact, there's only 2.8 million white South Africans whose first language is Afrikaans. There are about 6 to 8 million coloreds whose first language is Afrikaans. And now they want to rename the Tal Monument to make it inclusive. How much more inclusive could it be? It's a monument with seven spires to the seven different origins of the language. The only language on the planet with a monument to it. And these race-hustling racists in the ANC want to denigrate and destroy the most diverse language in South Africa. Thoughts? Mm. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is the, it's uh, as uh, uh, Tolkien said, um, evil can only corrupt, it cannot create. And uh, that's uh, that's what the ANC does. It doesn't create. It, it it's intellectually and morally bankrupt. There you go. Uh, it, and, it and, fin no and financially, and financially. Yeah, <laughs> oh, financially too. I thought that was that was pretty much just a given. I didn't have to mention that. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it's like saying the, that uh, Sir Ramaphosa is uh, is also not the, the 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 cleanest tool in the toolbox. I mean, come on. <laughs> like I remember there was a. There was an opinion piece written by, I, I don't even remember who, but one of these classic new dawners. And they said, um, uh, they're so disappointed now with these allegations in, against Ramaphosa. They can't believe they would be devastated if it's true. And my response was, well, 
uh, what they're basically saying here is that they would be uh, they're very distraught and would be devastated if they found out that the, the biggest crocodile on the river also eats baby zebras. <laughs> but uh, that's the thing when it comes to the ANC, uh, financially, morally and intellectually bankrupt. And to get back to the monument stuff, the easiest solution here for me is to build more monuments. Yeah, but not build, monuments build like one to the Nguni languages. 20, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't don't spend don't waste money uh, be prudent with your sp expenditure but a monument you can slowly build you don't have to build it within a year you can identify a place where you want to build or, it or, and or, slowly or, or and it. better yet you can build it with private donations that's how we built the world war ii memorial yeah. here in washington dc private donations funded not the state so i mean what's wrong and the perfect example of this is if you go to where the battle of blood river took place in 1838 there is a truck bore monument made with bronze um wagons mm, mm. and then on the other side of the creek i call it it's not really a river i'm sorry that's a creek on the other side of the creek is a zulu museum and memorial and that was built with private funds. I've visited both. And, I've and, been to the Zulu Museum and to the, the Blood River Memorial. And both are very respectful and both show the heritage of both protagonists in this battle. I mean, what's wrong with that? Why do you have to destroy one culture to promote your culture? That's the problem with the yeah. ANC. They're cancerous. Yeah, that's why I said build more monuments. And that's actually a... Uh, a point that I made uh, pertaining to America as well. I remember there was a, a while back where there was this statue that was built in New York City to, I can't remember exactly what it was honoring. I think it was honoring African culture or something like that, like a, uh, a statue with a big head that's sitting. I just see the picture in front mm. of me sitting like in the middle of the street. I don't remember uh, who built it, but it was built there. And then a lot of Republicans and, P and conservatives uh, lost their minds over it and said, why are we doing this? And I said, well, Guys, the response should be, when was the last monument that you built? When was the last statue that you built? Start thinking about, yeah, it's, if someone, if your opponents build an ugly statue or a statue that you don't like what it stands for, build a, a bigger one, a better one that uh, that all your people can go to and uh, make it the best damn statue and monument that you've ever seen and that other people can come visit it as well. That's, the, that's how you respond. You don't respond by tearing down other people's monuments and statues. You respond by building your own and building... Uh, uh, monuments to everything that you hold dear. I think the world can uh, use a lot more statues and monuments, not uh, see more statues and monuments butchered or destroyed or just uh, mutilated in any way. I think the world can use a lot more uh, beautiful statues and monuments, honoring things that many cultures and communities and nations find uh, find uh, beautiful and things that they want to honor. I think that's the right way forward, not to destroy things that other people hold dear or to deface things that other people uh, hold close to their hearts. Well, the reason for destroying things is because people are hateful. They're bigots and they're mm. racist. They're all three of those things. That's why they destroy it. You know, there's a statue of Joseph Stalin in New York City. Mm. You don't see me calling for it to be torn down. You don't see me throwing paint on it or attacking it or railing about it or going on social media and self-flagellating or self-pleasuring myself because I hate this statue. I find it ridiculous and asinine. If people are stupid enough in New York City to venerate one of the biggest mass murderers in history, well, that's on them. And by the same token, statues of Confederate generals, um, the fact that there were Confederate generals doesn't offend me. We won the war. The Union was preserved. Slavery was ended. Case closed. That's it. You want to build a statue? You want to venerate and celebrate the, your war dead? That's your prerogative. I don't have a problem with that. You know, if the Zulu want to venerate their war dead from the Anglo-Zulu war, that's their prerogative. I have no issue with that. Besides, the Brits were the aggressors there anyway, so we're not happy with them. But <laughs> <laughs> so going after yeah. the cockies again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where uh, us Afrikaners and you Americans can find common ground. <laughs> exactly. Oh, we can find a lot of common ground. There's a lot yeah, of yeah. there's a lot of parallel in our history that's really interesting a lot of people miss but you know it is uh this this whole argument here is 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 one that you can't see the ground as you said you really you really have to sit up and that's where we're at we find ourselves now I, I don't know that I'm guilty. I suppose I bear some guilt, but I mean, I kind of take the, the, this excuse, if you will. Um, I spent most of my adult years overseas supporting and defending liberty and protecting people and fighting Ebola and tuberculosis and building schools and clinics and fighting conflicts and fighting terrorists uh, and spreading democracy and republicanism, not republicanism as a Republican party, but a republic rather than mm -hmm. democracy, doing that my entire adult life. Meanwhile, my country was sold down a river by corporate elites and by numb, caffeinated Americans. Well, I, that's kind of odd. I can be numb and caffeinated. Sometimes they're numb, sometimes they're caffeinated. But people who are just, just not paying attention, they lost the ball. And now we have children in Wisconsin in middle school being charged with sexual harassment 
because they didn't name a child who chose to be using the pronoun they, which is a plural pronoun, to describe the person, whether the he or she. And so they tried to go with using a federal law to prosecute eighth graders for sexual harassment. Can you imagine such stupidity? Because people see the ground. This is utter nonsense. And this needs to be fought for. These are culture wars. These are political wars. And they're critically important, whether it's the Union flag or it's uh, mm-hmm. Delare. I mean, that was the dumbest argument ever. You know, when Malema and others tried to say that Delare was a racist song, what, white people being racist against other white people? Sure, that's possible. We see lots of liberal South Africans who are white and are very much racist and hate white people. But I mean, Delare had nothing to do with that. It was, it was, if anything, it should offend the Brits. It should offend the Brits. It should offend South Africans. All South Africans should stand up and go, wow, Delare, Delare, Salia de Boa, yeah, Salia Com. They should, they should all be standing up and going, wow, this is a cool song of culture. I mean, it wasn't just the Trek or the, 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 the Orange Free Staters and the, the Transvalers who fought. It was also, it was also in Guni peoples. It was also mm. the Tswana and the Basutu and in the Bele and all these people who fought with and against the Brits. And yeah. so anyway, but just maybe the maybe the EFF are standing up for the Brits because their advisors sit in London. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> or maybe I'm not. Well, I mean, that, that isn't that where the term white monopoly, ca- white monopoly capital came no, from absolutely. was London. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, just look at some of the ideas. I mean, the whole idea of pan-Africanism of a borderless Africa. That's not an idea that was thought up by uh, locals here in South Africa. That's 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 uh, European idealism and utopianism. That's stuff coming from all across the ocean, man. Yeah. That's uh, that whole idea of a united Africa without any borders. That's not an idea that was thought up by a local advisor. That's that's the type of ideas you get if you're being whispered in your ear by some crazy Europeans. Well, <laughs> or, or you're a an African who goes to Europe and gets all their education and falls for those ideas like Kwame Nkrumah and becomes a pan-Africanist. Uh, but for Kwame Nkrumah, it wasn't about uniting Africans. It was about Kwame Nkrumah becoming king of Africa. That's what it was all about for him. And he proved that with his corrupt government when he was expelled and disposed. But Light Rain said something a short while ago, uh, talking about censorship. And this, this, is, mm. this is not just censorship, but censorship is a tool of the state to silence and, and imprison its foes. That's what it's all about. So he says on censorship, did you see in, in, uh, in, the, in the Chai Com's land of glory, the dragon country there, uh, that there was a protest by people who wanted to get their money from a bank? So the government simply changed their social score to say, and their COVID status, to say that they were COVID and their positive status to be locked in their homes. See how easy it is to manipulate people? Um, and so now these people who just want to get money out of the bank because they were a nuisance to the government, they reclassified them as being infected with something they weren't infected with, so they had to be locked down in prison. You know, it's hmm. funny how the chai no, get away I, I don't this. like how you talk about things that are for people's own good. I mean, that's what the government says. The government <laughs> says this is for their own good and it's for the for their own safety. I can't believe you're you're skeptical of that. Uh, I I I I'm a heretic. Are you a tyrant, you, Chris? I, I'm a heretic. <laughs> I'm I, apparently I'm a according to the leftist hate wankers uh, who were certain <laughs> from a certain flying monkey crowd, uh, which is not a racial reference, but rather a Wizard of Oz reference for the Wicked Witch and all her flying monkeys, her minions. Uh, before minions became cool. Anyway, but uh, her flying minions, her flying monkeys. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I was termed um, a white supremacist, a white monopoly capitalist, a KKK supporter, to which I said, um, please uh, show me a scintilla of evidence for your false malicious claims. By the way, uh, to remind those people in South Africa who did that, that is actionable. I could see you in court in South Africa and you would wind up in jail or with a financial settlement to my favor. And I am coming to South Africa soon, Aaron. So if the flying monkeys want to get started again, I will engage with attorneys. I know all kinds of attorneys in South Africa, including <laughs> attorneys who overturn fraudulent election results. Did you know about that, Anson? I tell you about that. No. no oh, you I'm don't. Know. I'll tell you that story really quickly since we're talking about South Africa, of course. Yeah, go okay, it. so um, Michael Atkins is an election analyst, and one of my viewers brought him to my attention after the November election for Municipal Election South Africa. And he said, You should really read what this guy says. It's got some good stuff. Get him as a guest. So I had him on the program, and uh, he came on. He talked about how the IEC makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. But he says, You know, he says he's an independent analyst, and he reviews it, and he's been reporting at the IEC for like 10 or 15 years. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. they listen, sometimes they don't. And uh, he mentioned a case in Rustenburg, not Rustenburg, in Zeros, excuse me, in Zeros. Yeah, same difference, Rustenburg, Zeros, same area. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just offend a bunch of people in Zeros. But anyway, uh, so in Zeros, in the municipality, uh, there was a case in which there was an error. The EFF was mistakenly or fraudulently awarded 191 votes. I and, heard about that, yeah. Well, um, I'm the one that, that, that made this happen. Now, because of Michael, I'm not going to take all the credit, but but nothing was happening. Um, Michael wrote to the IEC and told them that, because the results weren't released until 96 hours after the election, all 
already out the 48 hour window to file a contested you know thing this is a very esoteric data driven thing that you know a candidate wouldn't mm -hmm. figure this out but an analyst would an analyst a data guy looked at this and he goes this is something not right here there's no way they got 191 votes in this precinct so they should get 19 so he reported and the IEC blew him off so he told the party involved the form for Democrats a new party created up there um, a Tswana mostly almost entirely Tswana party and he told them about it and they contact the IEC and the IEC sent them a very perfunctory disrespectful rude email back basically telling them to foot sec um, and they said you're outside the window it's too late well, no, you're not outside the window. The election results are the election results. And even if it's two days before the term expires, you fix the legitimate results. Anyway, so, so they ignored him. So um, I asked him. He didn't tell me who they were. I asked him to tell me privately. He told me and let me contact him. I contact the party. I had the leader of the party on. He's a, a, a man in his 30s. And uh, he said, yeah, this is what happened. So I contacted an attorney that we both know um, and asked him to put me in touch with someone that might handle this sort of thing. He did. I hosted that attorney and the party. And then um, he suggested a, a new group called the uh, Freedom Advocacy Network, FAN. And we brought them into the picture. And they decided to take this as a test case for their first major case to try to do something on behalf of the community and they sent uh they sent a letter from a, a lawyer from the fan to the iec and suddenly the iec responded and uh quickly within a matter of days by december 17th they confirmed in fact there was an error and in fact the forum for democrats were entitled to that seat not the eff it was erroneously awarded they said but we have to give the eff a few days to respond and they did and the eff didn't respond so they said on december 17th the seat they notified the municipality and zeros that you must give the seat to the forum for democrats they were the legitimate winners there was a mistake we have corrected it um, um, it wasn't until May that this politician finally was sworn into the council because the council fought, fought it and the city fought it. And then the EFF belated came back and said, we didn't have time to respond. Well, the court said, no, you had plenty of time. And they directed the city to install this person. He's now on the city council. And this is a case of, of democracy working despite the fact that others tried to subvert it. So, yeah, anyway, so um, I... I I have, I have interfered in South Africa's elections as a foreign national. <laughs> I don't work for the CIA. I work for myself, and I don't make any money doing it. But I have interfered in South African elections to the betterment of South Africans. So there you go. That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> no, well, Chris, you, uh, you've, got your, uh, you've got your fingers in a lot of pies, it seems. But yeah, when it comes to, uh, to South Africa, there's a lot of these types of cases. I mean, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Well, yeah. The, uh, the, the, do you really the, think that's an anomaly? Oh, no, 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 no. no. In fact, I'm going to have a forum. Um, forum with uh, Jack Miller from um, from the Cape Party because it happened to them in Cape Town. They had a seat that they should have gotten that was erroneously awarded to someone else. So we're going to get Jack and I'm going to get the uh, Tabiso from uh, the Forum for Democrats. I'm going to talk about this and, and how these mistakes you, you have to fight. Now, see, the thing is, here's the problem. You know this, Ernst. Um, every forum has resources. Uh, it's not unlimited resource, but it has resources. So it can fight on behalf of South Africans, black, white, brown, yellow, whatever they are. But... The Forum for Democrats is a small party with just a couple thousand supporters and its grassroots. They have no resources. I mean, the guy who's leading the party was was doing ride sharing. He's like an Uber driver, you know? That's what he did. That's what he's doing, but he's running for office to try to make a change. And so the IC just, you know, you're not the ANC, you're not the DA, you're not the IFP, you're not the EFF. Uh, we're not going to listen to you because you don't have any, you know, and, but, and that's what they do. And this is very dangerous, especially now that they've they've had a court decision that allows independent candidates to stand for office. Independent candidates don't have deep pockets unless you know they're rich and they're running for office on their own, like Donald Trump. But I mean, independent candidates. If I stood for office, I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to fight a legal case on a seat that I legitimately won, and nor do South Africans who are suffering greatly under the ANC's malfeasance. So uh, it's great to see these civic organizations like the Freedom Advocacy Network and also um, Afri Forum and then DRSA who stand up for South Africans and pool resources on the benefit or for the behalf of everyone. So that's great stuff. Hmm. Yeah, well, Chris, that's that's one of the things in South Africa that we are not, uh, uh, don't have a, a a shortage in in that is uh, civil society organizations and and good ones at that um south africa is very blessed with a very strong civil society and i think that's something unfortunately that zimbabwe when they needed it most uh, lacked was that strong civil society backbone that's what so uh, flip base always mentions that where he says that's a very strong speed bump that africa uh, that uh, south africa has that can stop anc to government tyranny um that uh, unfortunately zimbabwe didn't have in the early 2000s late 90s when they really needed it but uh, yeah very blessed and people need to uh, <laughs> people need to 
take notice and support those organizations because it's a it's still even though there's a lot of them it's still a very fine thin line between those organizations and uh, the government just having free reign to abuse and uh, tyrannize uh, its the citizens well and the sad part is that there's there's no shortage of work for these organizations. I mean, I, I, yesterday I opened up the news and I go to IOL, Independent Online, I go to News 24, Daily Maverick, and, and Rapport and a host of other sites. And I come across within three minutes, five more cases of corruption by ANC officials across the country at provincial, at municipal, and at national level. It just never ends. And that's just the corruption. We're not even talking about the renaming, the racist renaming campaign, the cultural genocide of Afrikaans, one of the official languages of South Africa, the abuse that members of parliament have to deal with when members of the EFF attack those who speak Afrikaans in Parliament. Speak a language we understand. Uh, well, okay, I don't speak Tswata, so I'm going to speak my language, which is Afrikaans. It's also an official language. So, foot sec. I know you understand that. <laughs> 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 no, Chris, it's, um, I think, uh, and I see uh, always uh, the people in your chat always are, are all Afriform supporters. So I think I'm preaching to the converted here. But at the same time, it's, it's something that's very important for people to take note is that what you mentioned there, that Afriform doesn't have infinite resources. I mean, we've got our hands full every day, 24-7, 365 days a year. It's not like we ever take breaks. It's not like we just sit around twiddling our thumbs, not knowing what to do. We've got constantly have work to do and it's the, there's very little time to get to all that work but if the ANC were to give us just a small little percentage of the tax money then we'd be able to help a lot more people uh, and do a lot more good but we know that's not going to happen because they'd never share their, their the gravy train they'd never share their spoils and their, their loot um, I think that's the right word so when it comes to Afri Forum we do the most that we can with our resources and uh, it's our membership that makes that possible and and the other thing is what I find funny is it's a little bit sad too, but some people see what AfriForum achieves and they think that it must be because we have like some uh, dark support or we have support from the, I don't know what type of- The uh, Gettys, the Rothschilds and Colonel Sanders before they went tits up. <laughs> but, the, but the problem is what, what makes it a little bit sad is that that shows that people see 300,000 members coming together for something bigger than themselves and they don't believe that it's possible. They don't believe that uh, 300,000 people with their little 20 rand, 50 rand, 60 rand, 100 rand donations can really make a difference. And that's sad that some people, it's a very small minority, but th that's still that people see AfriForum achieve all these amazing things. And they just can't fathom that this uh, is 300,000 people coming together to to make a difference and to change the world. And that's the that's the in Afrikaans you'd say a corpse That's the the head shift that's going to have to be made. Is that people need to see that this is how you get shit done. This is how you bring change. Not by don't put all your eggs in the political party basket. Don't completely abandon party politics, but also don't bet all your chips on it. Don't put your destiny entirely in the hands of party politics. Do something yourself as well. Get involved with a, an Afri Forum branch or get involved uh, with a, a local um, a civil society organization or just donate uh, to these organizations and then you, you'll see that the, the real difference being made. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, take part in uh, party, or not take part, but rather uh, shouldn't uh, care about party politics. I think there's still a, a lot of impact that party politics has on society. But like I say, don't put all your your eggs or all your chips uh, on that table. Um, I think you need uh, people need to start seeing that uh, civil society organizations uh, are the future in regards to uh, bringing about change, not just in South Africa, but in many other countries. And uh, you need to give those people their support. Well, in fact, uh, if it wasn't for civil society organizations and, 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 and I'm not a fan of lobbying groups, but lobbying groups that aren't lobbying for an industry, but on behalf of citizens in this country, we would be imprisoned and our liberty would be long gone. Uh, they're, they're holding the line right now against the tyranny that's coming out of Washington, D.C. and out of our state capitals. But two points on what you just said. Number one, uh, I, I think it was a tongue in cheek thing, uh, but I would, I would just make clear I would never advocate for any private organization receiving any funds from the state. Uh, the state is already stealing our money and misusing right. it. Uh, if people People want a private organization to succeed, then they should be part of it or they should contribute to it and support it. And that's what they should do. An example of this is in Germany where the German government collects tithes. People pay a church tax in Germany. It's taken out of your pay. Every paycheck you pay to a church. And if you don't want 
that, then you're denied last rites and church services. You don't get those when you die. So the government intervenes to collect taxes. That's not right. If you want to support a church or a mosque or synagogue, then you do it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday when you go to church, mosque, or synagogue, and you give money, you donate it, and you give your time to your your community. That's how you do it. That's the first thing. And the second one was, I lost my second point now. <laughs> It'll come back to me in a second here, but I had a second point that I want to talk about here. Mm. Anyway, it went completely no, out of my head. I think that's a big parallel between South, well, not a parallel, but something that we have in common between uh, uh, in South Africa and uh, the US is a strong civil society. I saw someone in the chat ask what happened to solidarity. You mean solidarity? I mean, the they, trade they are, they're still there. Yeah, they're still there. They're, they're our sister organization. They didn't go anywhere. They, I, I would know if they went somewhere. They're across the street. I see no, them busy, every day when I go They're busy building effective, efficient, under budget, yeah. on time uh, trade schools. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, they're helping a lot of people in their uh, work related uh, court cases, the cases that Afri Forum can't do. We can't do in Afrikaans, it's uh, Arbeit, uh, labor related uh, That's cases. The same word in, it's the same word That's in German. <laughs> Arbeit. I saw an article on the BBC yeah. today from someone who's from South Africa who's mixed race, not color, but mixed race, and uh, talked about um, what we say in German, Heimweh. I don't know how you pronounce it in Afrikaans. Is it Heimweh or something like that? Heimweh. How do you say it? Hmm. Uh, wait, uh, so how do you say what? A, a longing for home or a longing for a Heimweh. Longing. Heimweh. Uh, in, in sure, Af- I, don't think, I don't think there's a in Heimweh. No. Yeah, in it was spelled H-E-I-M-W-E-E. Well, the, the word escapes me at the moment. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll actually go check. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, um, uh, I see there in the, in the chat, the same person said, yes, solidarity, just not getting the news. Yeah, a lot of the things that solidarity does, uh, or solidarity, unfortunately, aren't things that are going to get in the front page, but they are very important. I mean, look yeah. at, for example, the building of Saltic. The building of Saltic only became a story, uh, a front page story when it was completed. Nobody was talking about it for the years that it was being built. I, I so did. that's the I, I talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, of course. I'm talking about the, the in the main with I the, know, uh, I the know. front pages. Uh, but yeah, that's the nature of the work that they do. Um, I see, Matthew you also asked Aaron said so you're a terrorist. Are those accusations true with the what they said with Dear uh, and uh, I think Afri Forum was also bundled into that. Uh, that very strange accusation by the ANC. But yeah, as I said earlier, that's uh, that's very rich coming from a, a, a political party that has a literal history of being a terrorist organization. Uh, well, yeah, can you say MK and Ponto we see way? Like we start yeah. the argument there. That's where it goes. I remember my point yeah. now. My point was you were talking about the small donations that people make to places like Afriform, 20 Rand here, 15 Rand there, that sort of thing. They really pile up. And I think we have uh, the personification of it right here as my guest. Uh, we surprised you one day, not all that long ago, after all these years of having an incredible YouTube channel with fantastic, balanced, reasonable, cogent discourse and content, you had never received a payout from YouTube. I was astounded mm. and dismayed to find that. So I colluded. Mm. That's right. I colluded. <laughs> not like not like Russia. I colluded with yeah. my viewers to come on your channel and... Um, that was pretty cool that day. I mean, you were all, it, it's okay. Maybe I read the read the, the video wrong, but it looked like you're almost in tears. You were very, I think you were very no, emotional. It was, it was very heartwarming, Chris. It was, it was one of my favorite videos just for the fact of uh, seeing people come together and doing something very nice. And, very and, and, and that's the point Colluding I'm making. for good. That's right. And that's my point. People came together. There were small donations and larger donations. And whoo, for the first time ever, you got to pay out from YouTube. It was really cool. Mm, yeah. No, that's the thing, Chris. I think that's the big message that I want people to take from what Afri Forum does is that what what we do is basically our members doing it. It's our members making it possible. It's not just the people working for Afri Forum. It's the members that give us the resources to do what we do. And uh, I can say that as a member of the organization that I work for, I also give my uh, my donation uh, back that gets cycled back into the organization. Um, but yeah, that's what uh, people need to do. And there are many other organizations that uh, people can support that are definitely worthy of that support. DSA is one of those organizations that definitely deserve your support. They're doing great work. Absolutely. Well, listen, I'm, I um, will be in South Africa in August and September. You know, the good Lord will and the creek don't rise, as we say in America. <laughs> but uh, I will be there in August and September. And uh, I want to place, of course, I'll be as Halteng. So I don't know if uh, maybe you or who I talked to, to somebody to give me a chance to come by after forum, meet up with some folks. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. just uh, just remind me around that time and we can definitely make a plan. You can come see the, the, the secret sniper uh, uh, training. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we can see all the people with the swastikas and all the all the you know the <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the entire place is just littered with old south african flag it's just everywhere yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you're so vigorously defending the flag you don't want that <laughs> of course of course no yeah, but say, no but, chris you can come you can come peek behind the curtain yourself uh, if you come visit you'll be more, more than welcome uh, i just can't guarantee that uh, adam or kali will be there on that specific day they're very busy often uh, off uh, not at the the office itself uh doing a lot of other meetings and stuff yeah. but uh, i'll try and organize that you can meet uh, a lot of people there at afri forum that you you've come to know over the years well yeah no it's it's not just uh, seeing ernst and seeing kali and jacques brudrick uh mm. it's also there's lots of other people i keep seeing you in photographs of court cases the two women or two young ladies i have no idea who they are i'd like to meet them too they obviously work for afri forum you're standing there with some sort and you're filing a court case against the eff and there's two <laughs> ladies there with you i don't know who they are but <laughs> but obviously a lot more people work for the organization and also like to go see soltech and and all mm. these things and do reports on that sort of thing. Uh, I uh, will be there probably for at least three weeks. Um, I'll be going to Uppington. All right, no, that's more than enough time. Yeah, well, I won't be in Tank for three because I'm traveling all over the country. So, And, of course, right. with gasoline at 8,000 Rand per liter, I'm going to be hitchhiking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. projecting what the price will be in August and September. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. It's crazy. Yeah, Chris, but I'll definitely see you around that time. Just let me know uh, beforehand so that I can uh, make sure there's space uh, in my uh, my schedule so we can make a plan. Listen, uh, Deborah Morey said there's an Afriform office next to um, something, her, I just GPA, uh, I guess a general practitioner, and Benoni. Now, I can never see the name Benoni ever again without thinking of uh, the, the group from Cape Town, the, the guy and the girl who did that um, spoof about the Omegod variant. Um, I don't know if you ever saw that. Did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's a, there's a group in Cape Town. They're they're an acting group, and they did this incredible thing. Uh, so he plays uh, one of the variants of uh, of the virus, and she's uh, the oh my god variant, the o Omicron. And uh, anyway, so and she's like you know because um, she's the she's this is from last year. You know she's the shiny star at the moment. All the paparazzi, all the press, it's too much, and uh, he's kind of irrelevant now. And he goes, well, mm. just yesterday somebody mentioned me in Benoni. So, <laughs> all, all I have for those who've seen that, you know what I'm talking about that's uh that's i can mm -hmm. never that's how i think of benoni all the time of course that's right there by or tambo for those who don't know all right so Ernst, unfortunately you're gonna have to go we just had you for an hour yeah. you've got another commitment so anything you'd like mm -hmm. to leave us with or any other cases that really we should be paying attention to that the, maybe the media is not talking about outside the mm -hmm. uh, the free speech case with the flag i'll give you a chance mm -hmm. to uh, get some comments in there yeah so two things i think people need to uh one thing for them to think about and one thing to pay attention to one thing to pay attention to is definitely uh, Afri Forum social media, specifically our YouTube channel. Uh, my uh, colleague, John Bruderich, uh will be, I know a lot of you have uh, have watched his documentary, Open Borders, that did very well, almost 100,000 views now. Um, he's going to be making another one of those uh, very soon, uh, somewhere this year. So um, you probably should be keeping an eye on Afri Forum's YouTube channel. Subscribe there to, to be notified when that documentary drops. Other very good videos there as well, even videos featuring me. Um, but then also something to, to think about in the, the week ahead, specifically maybe uh, tomorrow when a lot of South Africans have a, a, or not a lot of South Africans, when I think most South Africans will, will, won't be going to work tomorrow, some might be. But uh, when, when people have some free time tomorrow, think about just the organizations, list them on your, on your, uh, on your hand, uh, like count on your fingers, the organizations in South Africa doing good work, the non-governmental organizations, organizations like Afri Forum, Solidariteit, Dear SA, um, Sarkalicha, start going through some of them uh, in your head and uh, ask yourself, are you doing anything to support them in any way? It doesn't have to even be monetarily, just sharing their, their press releases, uh, telling people about the good things that these organizations do, that goes a long way. So uh, maybe just something to think about, reflect a little bit on what organizations you are grateful for in South Africa, in, civil, in the civil uh, society of South Africa. I think that can also go a long way just to give people some perspective. That's it. And uh, maybe lastly, just um, uh, I'd like people to have a, a, a rustige weekend, have a nice Ooh, a and relaxed calm. weekend. <laughs> yeah, have a yeah. nice, relaxed, calm weekend. As Snodkop um, says, rak for my rustig. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my last thing that I leave the, the audience with. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. John Jarvis has a question of how a person is 
got a lot of time on their hands oh, to sure. get actively involved. I think you've kind of answered it right there, but maybe more specifically, uh, just what, uh, what was, was the question? He just wants to know to sure. how a person who has time on his hands gets actively involved with the organization, legwork, research. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's there's two ways. So, uh, firstly, go to uh, Afri Forum's website and go see if there's a branch near you. Uh, there's 150 AfriForum branches all across the country. So you will probably have one close to you. Just type in AfriForum, get involved, and then you uh, join one of those branches. They do all uh, a lot of good stuff for their communities. And then also, if you don't have a branch close to you, just become a member by uh, going to AfriForum's website and clicking join. You can also, if you live abroad, you can also support AfriForum by going to Friends of AfriForum. And uh, then you can also become a, a donating member of, of AfriForum. Um, but yeah, there's many. The best way, if you live in South Africa, to get actively involved is to go join a branch. Uh, that will also get you up to speed with, uh, for example, neighborhood watches, farm patrols, all of that. Richard Lemmer, Richard Lemmer points out that Afriform has Afriform TV as well. Uh, I checked that out. Mm. I really like the come the cartoons that were first on there, but you can go check that out as well, folks. That's free. You can check it out. And uh, before you go, just uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I was pre appreciate it. And bye bye, Donkey. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, two things. Uh, number one. Um, uh, that uh, video short that I was telling you is about three minutes and 20 seconds. It's by Goals Cape Town. Anyway, I've sent you the link in WhatsApp so you can watch mm. it. You're going to laugh. It's hilarious. And you'll mm -hmm. see that when he says Benoni, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I've right. forever burned into my mind. And the second is uh, Rob Hutchison just confirmed that he will be on the channel tomorrow for Answer the Question. And Rob and I have never had a guest in the program. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I will send you a link and you're invited if you have time to come on with us at the same time tomorrow and join us for Answer the Question. We'll talk about the terrorist organization of DRSA. I mean, I mean, the, the huge terrorist organization of DRSA. But uh, Ernst, you're welcome. Come on if you have a little bit of time tomorrow. Um, you don't have to stay the whole time. But uh, that'll be you'll be the first guest we ever have on that segment if you're able to make it. So thank you very much mm. for your time. All right. Uh, no, Chris, thank you very much for the platform. And I'll, uh, I'll see everyone uh, next time on my channel as well. If you uh, want to go see my content, there is a link in the description. So you can uh, see uh, what I get up to there on my YouTube channel. Maybe... Uh, maybe you'll even see uh, an appearance of Chris there in the in the future when I uh, when we get uh, get the the show going on my channel as well. Uh, I think it's my turn now after this. <laughs> well, I, it's been your turn for a long time. I've had you like six times. Yeah. I'm trying to think how often I've been on your <laughs> channel, R Roman. When do you have me it's on? Been, anyway, but it's because uh, you get all these exclusive scoops and interviews from me when we do court cases and campaigns. <laughs> well, yeah, it's probably also because I'm meddling in your elections. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Aaron, as always, Go it's ahead. a great pleasure, folks. And and the reason he mentions the link is because the previous times Aaron's has been on here, I've always been like, I'll have Aaron on when I'm like, I've got like six interviews scheduled in the same week, you know, and he's one of those interviews and I, there's a lot of work to prep and I don't always remember to put links in. And he's like, uh, Chris, could you uh, put the links to my program on there? So <laughs> this time they were in the description when it was posted. Aaron <laughs> Funsale, the Conscious Caracol, as always a pleasure. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. If not, thank you for your time. We'll get you back on sometime soon. Cheers. Work well. All right. I'll let him drop off. I'm going to hang around, folks. Uh, yeah, so that's Ernst Funsell, The Conscious Character. I hope you enjoyed that interesting conversation and the back and forth between the two of us. Be sure to smash the like button. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to hang around for a few minutes here, folks, because uh, it's into my normal broadcast time. And 56 minutes from now, I'll be on with Ronaldo Rose on Wednesdays with the Colonel. On a Wednesday. How interesting that is. So I'm not rushing off. I'm going to stick with you guys. Let me go and see some of the comments here. Conscious Caracol. Let's see. Uh, uh, Citizen Guardians here. Welcome to Lars Salas. Afriform should make an English news outlet called Mango Media. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Afriform do a lot of cleaning lately. Okay. Um, Lori Letson is in from Finland. Good to see you, Lori. Um, didn't see you for a while there, but I noticed you're back the last couple of days. I hope you're well. Of course, my schedule wasn't exactly um, uniform for the past several weeks because my travel. Uh, Debbie says, always great listening to well-versed speakers. Thanks, Chris and Ernst. Yeah, it's, it was our pleasure. And Brett supports Friends of Afriform. That's cool. Afriform needs a counter-information strategy to exploit the particular... Well, I think that Afriform does a pretty good job responding or not responding to those things. I mean, as, as organizations go, they're probably one of the better ones dealing with it yeah, and, and kind of let it like, um, you know, water off a duck's back sort of thing, a lot of it. But um, yeah, so John Jarvis, I hope that uh, Aaron answered your question. Hopefully it helps. Find a local chapter. Just look them up online. Uh, they have English on Afrikaans. Yeah, there you go. Well, our style says Afriform has learned to overcome the smearing, but they need to learn how to counter it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Now to press buttons, must learn how to surf the wave. I think they surf the wave on some things pretty well. 
that ad was classic. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the Goals Cape Town. That was incredible. <laughs> Someone in Benoni. <laughs> in fact, we should probably play that, right? Let's play that real quick. <laughs> that is just too funny. I love that stuff. Let me see if I'm trying to find. I'm not sure which browser to work with here because um, I didn't get set up for it. So let me bring up another browser. Uh, okay, let's do this one here. I bring this over here. There we go. Goals Cape Town. So here we go. Let's see if I can't get this going. For those who didn't see this, this is just. Oh, come on. Here we go. All right, this is just too funny. This is from last, last. Uh, when did they put this up? Was it October? No, December 8th last year in the midst of the Oh My God variant. So let me see if I can't get this to come up over top of this. <laughs> I'll laugh in the background, but it's just too funny. It's too funny. Come on, where are we at? Come on, 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 come on. Where's the screen at? It's not coming up. Uh, there it is. Let's try that and see if that works. Okay. There we go. Here we go. This is from Goals Cape Town. These guys are too funny. Oh, got to get the volume on. Volume is off. Here we go. Martini on the rocks. Delta. Delta, darling, is that you? Omicron. You look fabulous and terrifying. <laughs> Call me, call me. Thank you, darling. Oh, that man looks exactly like Sars. Oh, it is Sars. He's a bartender now. I thought he died. Well, this is actually worse. <laughs> <laughs> Quirky. Anyway, darling, let's talk. Must How are you holding up? Holding up? Well, it must be so hard with the career you've had, the legacy, to suddenly wake up and be so irrelevant. Actually, yesterday somebody mentioned my name in Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Actually, yesterday somebody mentioned my name in Baloney. <laughs> That's so classic. I love it. Uh, only South Africans would laugh at that. It's so well. This is the best things that come out of, the, out of the pandemic was this video. These guys are hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Olive? Not for me, thank you. Are you sure? Quite sure. I don't want it. I'm giving it to you. I don't want your olive. Oh, God, Delta, I forgot. I'm so sorry. I forgot that you can't taste. Oops. <laughs> Delta, won't you be a darling and sell them a new creation? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's made from the splattering of everyone's coughs. <laughs> what do you think? Fruity. Fruity. Floral. Floral. Or woody. Oh, God, Delta. Well, I've done it again. It's all right. I'm a horrible, horrendous bitch. I forgot that you can't smell. Either. <laughs> I'm sorry, how many deaths have you caused? None. You'll get better. But I'm incredibly transmissible. Oh, we know. Very quick to penetrate the soul. <laughs> Slut. Failure. Bitch. Fag. Sorry? Fag. Fancy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ami, you seem to be doing just fine. Honestly, darling, fame is exhausting. Really? Yes, I mean, it's only the first week. The press, mm. the paparazzi, mm. everywhere you turn, there I am. Right. CNN, mm. BBC, Al Jazeera, I'm big in the Middle East, can you believe it? <laughs> you understand? You've had a taste of it. <laughs> Naughty pun. Naughty pun. You might say you've gone completely viral. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, this is not a paid partnership. I'm not an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Spike proteins really makes all the difference. How many do you have? 18. I have 50 mutations. You? Nine. I speak 15 European languages. I speak Indian. <laughs> I think you mean Hindi. <laughs> well, you know what, Ami? Satan! I miss you too, Lucifer. <laughs> yes, I've landed in Cape Town. I'm actually sitting in a bar with Delta, can you believe it? Hello, Satan. Delta! Miss you. No, he isn't dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't on my way. All right, darling. Busy, busy. I must dash. I have to go shut down O.R. Tambo. Come, come. Chin up. You don't want to end up like Alpha. <laughs> Goals Cape Town, folks. You got to love it. That's fantastic. That's good stuff. Um, they put that out in December last year. Wow, that was the funniest thing ever. So, yeah, Goals Cape Town, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, check them out on Facebook. That's where they're at. Um, yeah, so Brett Sessoms is starting a new job tomorrow. Brett, I hope it's paying well and you get some good benefits. Uh, maybe you can super chat. Uh, but it says you're not going to be catching my live streams anymore. Well, you won't be working 24 hours a day, Brett. You know I'd live stream at all hours. But I think you mean my normal live streams because you won't be available. I wish you the best in your job there, Brett, and hopefully it, uh, you find it enjoyable and rewarding and compensates you adequately or at least well. Chris, I think Gideon from Paratus is DRSA's new CEO. What? Are you serious? Gideon's like 15. How could he be CEO of DRSA? Why didn't they offer me that job? <laughs> uh, this never gets old. No, it never gets old. That is so funny. That is just so funny. Anyway, um, Brett, starting a job tomorrow, I know you mentioned earlier, starting tomorrow as a child abuse investigator. Oh, ooh, well, that's going to be an unpleasant uh, experience. I mean, wow. Yeah, the play on words is brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Why, well, just yesterday, somebody mentioned me in Benoni. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't taste. Naughty pun. <clears throat> just too funny. Too funny. Since last year, says Lars Hollis. Really? I didn't know that. Hmm. Hmm. I did not know that. I thought it was Rob. Interesting. Interesting. And watching streams and support your channel, but when I watch live. Well, Brett, the good news is that YouTube allows you to super chat after the fact with a super thanks. So you can still do that, Brett. <laughs> Brett's been one of the reliable super chatters. He's not a Bill Gates, but he's very generous uh, with his super chats. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate it. You know, in these dark days when inflation is eating everyone alive and super chats have gone the way of dinosaurs and cogent arguments from Democrats. <laughs> In other words, they're non-existent. Yeah, so um, it is great to have people comment. But yeah, let, let me say thanks to the 155 people who tuned in for Conscious Care. You know, by the way, Conscious Care will set the record for the most concurrent live viewers ever on my channel back in August of 2020 when we had almost 600 live stream viewers for a guest, not the largest for a broadcast. I've had 6,000 for a broadcast at the same time before, but for a guest to be on the program, he had the record. Actually beat Steve Hoffmeyer. Now, to be fair, Steve Hoffmeyer came on when I had a couple thousand fewer subscribers at that point. So we, yeah. Ha, uh, we knew something before Chris. Ah, maybe I'm just playing, Richard. Maybe I did know. Marlo Bester, welcome back. It has been a while. I hope you're okay. Hope you're well. Are you a subscriber on this version of the channel? I haven't seen you in ages. Donkey years, in fact. It's been donkey years. I can tell people my profession, but never discuss work cases, so I'll not be able to talk about it. I won't ask, Brett. I, I wouldn't want to know. Uh, child abuse is not something I want to know. It's why we hire cogent, reasonable, trustworthy people to investigate it so that we don't have to deal with it, and it can be taken care of in a proper light. By the way, folks, uh, if you missed it yesterday, I had Henneke Meyer on here for about 30 minutes. Brilliant, fantastic. Really enjoyed having him on the channel yesterday. Also, I've done a bunch of shorts this morning, you know, to see what's going on, but they're not really doing particularly well. Uh, I did one on... Last night about the, um, you know, funny, those wheat prices, how we had food shortages two days after the invasion of Ukraine, which, of course, is producing no wheat in February in the dead of winter. Uh, and then uh, I did uh, one this morning on Mitch McConnell, who apparently is voting to pass this unconstitutional restriction on firearms and red flag laws, which violate the Constitution. And then I did another one about why are law-abiding citizens the target when 90% of gun crimes are committed with illicit firearms, not law-abiding citizens? And then Ryan Air's offer cons. Brett asked me to talk about that, so I did a quick short on that because I saw a news article on it this morning, and also one on the Vegas Golden Knights. But I don't expect a lot of people to tune in on that. That's hockey news. So that's some of the content I put up this morning. In case you're curious and want to check it out, but thank you all for that. Uh, Marlo is subscribed. Thank you so much, Marlo. You know this. This would be. This should, we should be like Amway. We should be like if you get ten people, you know. Just subscribe to the channel. <laughs> if everybody went and got ten people they knew, we could grow to sixty thousand subscribers like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, donating to Iran is not available in my region. Uh, Patrick, I don't know where you're at that you can't donate. Um, but um, are you talking about for donating to Iran to Afriform or to Chris Wine Africa? Well, if you want to donate to Chris Wine Africa, um, you know, Super Chat isn't the only way to help out the channel, uh, if that's what you're talking about. So for those who don't know, I do have a PayPal account and I do use my PayPal account. So let me see if I can find that real quick. Um, where's it at? It's here somewhere. Oh, come on. There it is. There's the PayPal. So there's the PayPal address if you want to send something that way. People do sometimes send it that way. So if you want to. And the nice thing about PayPal is they don't take 30%. They do take a fee for your foreign currency stuff. Uh, it's usually less than 10%, which is nice and refreshing. Uh, but uh, if you want to use PayPal. And also the thing about PayPal is when you send it, it's there now. 
With YouTube, I can wait as much as almost two months to see revenue that you donate, depending on what data. Say you donate money on the 22nd, um, or on the 23rd, let's say on the 24th, because the 23rd is the day of the cycle. So you donate on the 24th. I won't see it until the 24th of the following month. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. It will be on streams most weekends, probably not during the week, okay? Um, oh, to PooTube. Yeah, well, that's, that's we've got the outlook there. So you need to do interviews with Afroform people when you're in. Yeah, I will. That's the plan. Uh, Rainier, 12 months as a master and commander. Thank you for the Rainier. Thank you so much. Um, that's the one that actually generates a little bit of revenue, the master and commander. I'm grateful for all memberships on the channel, but we keep some of them very inexpensive because people don't have a lot of money, and I understand that, and they still want to be part of the crowd. So hopefully they've done taxes. Oh, by the way, yeah. So speaking of money, uh, I paid taxes yesterday. Ouch. Uh, I haven't made much money for my consulting and my YouTube this year, um, but I still had a hefty tax bill because 43% of the income that I take in, I pay out in federal taxes every quarter, 43%. So um, nearly half the money I've made since uh, March just went out the window. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Anyway, Meyer was cool about the refund too. Yeah, I never liked him, but he was changed my opinion about him yesterday. Maybe it's because I like the bulls. Well, there you go, Power Rule One. That's pretty cool. Uh, I will I will share that, uh, that that one of my viewers said they never really liked Henneke Meyer, but after watching that interview, like him now. Yeah, and if you go if you watch the I actually did his actual. See, to be fair, you didn't know this for the stream, but I'd already warned him ahead of time because I didn't want to offend him. I wanted to get him back and I said, you know, I'm going to do this. So, the actual um situation where I um actually question him. That's let me show you that. This is the actual reaction here because this was off camera. So, let me see. Uh, this one was off camera, so you're going to love this. This is the actual video. It's on my channel, but uh where the heck are we at here? So, is this one here? Let me see. I'm not sure which window we're on here. Let me see which window we're on here. So uh, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Okay, Firefox, here we go. That's, there it is. Okay, so yeah, there it is. Okay, let me, uh, okay, it's only 20 seconds, so you don't have to be, deal with much here. But this is the actual, this is before we went on air. And this is his genuine reaction. Listen to it. He laughs his butt off. It's pretty funny. So um, here we go. All right, so this is the actual before we went on air. My, my audience has dared me to do it. Um, so just a warning. Uh, this is my ticket to Japan versus South Africa at Brighton in 2015. And um, I told my fans I was going to ask for a refund from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just kidding. No, it was a great, it was an incredible game. So, I mean, I wouldn't want my money back on that. It was well spent. But it was 85 quid. <laughs> it was a lot of money. <laughs> there you go. So that was... Um... That was just 20 seconds of that. That was um, <laughs> that was before I interviewed him yesterday. So did you know that was off uh, offline? We had that conversation before it went on just moments before. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, Brett wants to know what percentage of our GDP goes towards defense. I think the current figure is somewhere around with 3.4 percent of GDP, which is less than 4 percent, which is traditional. But that's that's at heightened times. Uh, so it's around 3.4 percent, I think. I could be wrong. I have to check on it. Um, I don't know. It's difficult to say because the federal government keeps spending money it doesn't have. Joe Biden's two trillion dollar deficits are off the chart yeah that was funny eric i thought so too um oh dear didn't mean to jinx you with that it truly sucks who are you jinxing uh if you get a snap can snap camp like roman did when he started what's a snap scan is that like the little um the upc thing snap scan uh, there's there's he was using the what was that thing he was using um i know um oh Snap scan. Let me see. Yeah, no, that's that that snap scan is a device. That's you know that's but the thing that that, that Rahman was using when he started, uh, it's only available in South Africa. I forget the name what that was called. He used to make funny. Tax man calling in a Chris. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, I'm paying my taxes on time and paying more than I need to. I'm overpaying. Uh, just print more dollars and stuff yourself on your bed. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll print more money. <laughs> it's what Joe Biden, it's what the Federal Reserve are all in favor of. Democrats, Republicans, the Uniparty, all love to print more money, folks. Um, and that was all I got from that interview. Huh? L5, my pence. Okay, what, what what did you say? Mowing my yard before 90 degrees. Yeah, that, watch out for that heat there, Beth. Oof, gosh. Beth, I, you're in Arizona. I, want to, I, want to keep, I keep thinking you're in Texas. But um, where is, what did L5 pence say? I missed something. Red Robin, hey. I'll play the goat. Okay, I'll play the goat. Okay. The goat's still here, I think. Let me see. I don't think I got rid of the goat. Um, let me see. Uh, is it? Uh, oh, here it is. Here's the goat. Okay, here we go. A fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No. It's a fucking goat. <laughs> it's 
a fucking goat. No, it's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. <laughs> oh, God. Kids can be precious. This adorable little child, too. <laughs> We got to hear that one again. Okay, this is this is a child telling its mother, it's his or her mother, that it's there's a goat outside, but he doesn't know the goat is because probably the father's running. Around, it's that fucking goat again. So the child thinks it's called fucking goat. This is too good. A fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. <laughs> the funniest part is he's so proud of himself. Look, ma, it's a fucking. <laughs> oh dear god that's too funny <laughs> a deficit is going to shoot through the roof when china encourages war in syria to further divide washington's tension resources for conquering taiwan oh my goodness that's scary thoughts red house hey Ohio has been feeling a bit like South Africa the last couple of days. We're experiencing load shedding here. Exper uh, what? Enjoy the Heineken vid Heineke video. Uh, you wrote Heineken. It's Heineken. I uh, hope you can get Mornay stand up. Yeah, Mornay and Bismarck Duplessis would really be cool. So, yeah, working on that. Um, anyway, that was <laughs> – oh, gosh, that was funny. You know, I just remind – kids can be so entertaining. I remember this one, folks. This one's great. This is uh, earlier this year in Nevada when uh, the fascists lifted the face covering requirement in Nevada schools. This one's just precious. I love this response, too. <laughs> you think they're excited? Is anybody excited? The social and developmental harm done to a couple billion children by these fascist totalitarian losers is really incalculable. We'll be dealing with this for decades. These will be children, many of whom will be mal or ill-adjusted to social interaction. Uh, they'll be socially isolated. They will be malcontents in this crowd. We'll have all kinds of other ills and woes, drug abuse, um, uh, probably domestic violence, um, maybe even some psychopaths as a consequence of this. And before anybody says, I'm losing it, I'm not. This is quite simply what's going to happen. Children who are toddlers, when people walk around with their face covered, and the children can't see the expressions in the faces of the adults, do not learn right from wrong, do not learn intent or unspoken language and as a consequence. They will be maladjusted and not be able to read humans because at a critical developmental stage, they were imprisoned by the corrupt state. Yeah. Not to mention all the poor little boys and girls who are molested by their abusers incestuously when they are trapped in their homes during lockdown. Not to mention the millions of taxpayers defrauded here in the United States who pay for schools through their property taxes, which were taken in full when schools were not in session for over a year. The cost to run the school was dramatically lower, yet the state still took the money and wasted it instead of giving the money back to the taxpayers who desperately need it, many of whom lost their jobs and were barely making it from paycheck to paycheck. The money not legitimately given to schools through property taxes should have been returned to property taxpayers so that they could survive the lockdown hysteria. Yep. Even Russian Ukrainian war is a proxy war. It is. China's already learned from the sanctions and moved. Yep, 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 yep. Well, China already evaded the sanctions and already gave Russia a golden ticket before the conflict even started. Russia only went in Ukraine with the approval of the Chai Coms. Only the West to win is to prevent the proxy wars that they're signed and dead the West. Um, huge repercussions all around from lockdown. Well, why don't we just avoid these things altogether? Why, why should we be in Somalia? Somebody tell me why the United States should have 500 troops in Somalia. Has having the African Union mission in Somalia ended al-Shabaab? Save the lives of Somalis? Restored governance to Somalia? No. They've been there since 2007. 14 years. And the conflict continues. Al-Shabaab continues. You cut one head off, another head on the snake appears. Why is America there pouring our treasure down the drain? We can do it with drones. That's what Barack Obama did. Donald Trump did it as well. Joe Biden's doing it. Why, why do we have to be on the ground with trips? Why are we in Niger and Mali? Why aren't we in Ukraine? Why aren't we in Myanmar? I'm not arguing we should be there. 
My point is that we're in places where it's easy and we can roll over sovereign states to get what we want. We're not in places where it's a little more difficult or the catastrophic losses will be well felt. Yeah, no, it's uh, just, you know, fold up your tent and walk away from all these struggles. It's silly at some point. Fleshin's here. Welcome, Fleshin. How is Oxford today? I used to get thrown out of the shops for wearing plastic masks. Now people ask me where they can buy one. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so true. Before the last update, Hat and I were standing in a shop with our plastic clear mask. Smiled a two-year-old. Her words were, look, Ma, other people also have smile like you. Exactly. Exactly. How sad is that, Leovin? And you know what's really sad about it? We knew this. Well, not all of us. I said this from March onwards of 2020. Very carefully chose my words. Of course, the PooTube censorship platform, you have to be careful. But very carefully chose my words and warned people and told people about this fraud. Not the jab, not the virus. No, no, no. About the political scam associated with it and the harm it was doing. It's really sad. It's truly, truly sad. Uh, you need to be there because some general and his sons are making money from the war or semi-war or just the troops. Yeah, generals aren't making money from war. I don't know where people get that idea from, Peril. Generals don't make money from war. They don't make money from war. Political parties make money from war. Governments make money from war. Corporations make money from war, but generals take more money from war. Maybe fame and glory, maybe if that's your argument. Um, but um, that's a dual-edged sword. Not too many generals who fought in Iraq or in Afghanistan are in demand today, are they? Nobody's looking for Petraeus or looking for Allen or looking for any of these other folks. And in fact, some of them have been involved in scandals. So yeah, dual-edged sword. Listening to a pathologist, doctors talking about how difficult it is to get rid of the mold. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. People getting thrown out because of a plastic mask. Yeah, thrown out by people who know nothing about epidemiology, about the spread of infectious disease, about the lethality, the, the, the nothing, ex-generals. Ah, okay, there you go, ex-generals. There you go, Peril. Fair point. Well, I mean, if a defense contractor ever wants to hire me and pay me a buttload of money, I might consider it. <laughs> but I've never went and applied. Never applied for any of those defense contractors. I've had the opportunity. In fact, uh, as some of you know, I've turned down several job offers so that I can continue doing what I'm doing here. And they've been quite lucrative. Uh, I'll tell you, if inflation keeps up, I might have to take a job. I might have to go go get a job because the Super Chats aren't covering it. And uh, if I'm going to travel as much as I say I'm going to travel, something's got to pay for that. And so I may have to take a job. Yep, yep. Are people still required? Uh, yeah, technically, Red House, I think they are. Indoors, aren't they still required? Still required to wear them. Um, Oops, uh, there's another telemarketer calling my phone. Hopefully the answering machine will pick it up. Or as the Brits like to say, the answer phone. <laughs> the answer phone. Folks, I'll be on with Ronaldo at the top of the next hour. So I find that kids can't take their eyes off me when I wear a mask. So sad and heartbreaking. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And, and they don't care that they've done this harm. And they've offered no solutions to try to help kids. But you can't recoup this. And the people, the kids I feel the worst for, are the ones that I caution about. Those who are four, five, and six years old who are learning to read and write at the start of their educational experience, you don't just go back to school six months later and pick up where you left off. They've got development. Their brain has grown. They have more brain cells. They're taller. They're healthier. They're growing. They're developing. Their body's expanding. And they're not in the same place they were. That's why we start educating children when they're five and six years old. We don't wait till they're 10 because those are key developmental years. And you don't make up that time. The things you don't learn, it takes you longer to learn them later on. And it becomes more and more difficult. The human brain is a fascinating organ. And the way it is absorbs information. When you are young, your head is a sponge. Little children can learn three or four languages simultaneously and be proficient in all of them. And they learn right from wrong. They learn not to stick their fingers into the mains. Don't put a fork in the mains. Don't touch an open flame. They learn those things. But when you shelter them and lock them away and protect them, protect them, yeah, yeah protect them from the world. Marla says, if you'd be interested, I'd love to have an offline conversation with you at some point about dentistry, public health, and oral factor cancer in Africa. I'm sure you find. Yeah, Marla, that would be interesting. Send me an email, the All About Africa email address, which I'm really bad about checking lately, but please send me one there. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, so, see, let me just talk about that very quickly before I end the stream. Uh, check PayPal. Really enjoyed this show. Well, Janet, I'll do that right now. Let me check PayPal. Janet's done PayPal before. She also just sent a little super chat through here. Did you already send one before and I missed it? If I did, I'm sorry. Let me log into my account on PayPal. 
Let me see. Doesn't give me a two-factor thing. You know, I was doing this. Okay, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Come on. I don't want your credit card. Whoa! Janet Liddy comes through with a big one. $40 super chat in there. Wow, thank you so much for that. Well, that's very kind of you, Janet. That's really kind of you. And by the way, since Janet sent that in U.S. dollars, it didn't cost a penny. They didn't take a cent. Whereas in South Africa, take a little bit. So I got the whole 40 bucks. Thank you, Janet. Bye-bye, donkey. Janet Liddy with two super chats. One here. Janet in South Carolina, where the humidity is god-awful. By the way, my new neighbors uh, will be coming to Charleston. Uh, they're getting married soon, and they'll be coming down to Charleston, and um, that's where they're going to spend their time. You're going to get married in Charleston. So um, I asked them why, and they said because the Caribbean was ridiculous, and they heard Charleston was lovely. And I said, Charleston is lovely. It's a beautiful place to go to, and they should check it out. So they'll be coming down here. Thank you for that, Janet. That's very considerate of you. That's the first super chat that's come through on PayPal in six weeks. So thank you, Janet. And I think you weren't not that far behind. You're three or four behind that. So thank you so much for that. Really kind of you. Thank you, Janet. Um, awesome. And thank you for the two bucks on this side as well. Um, what was I talking about? I was going to talk about something and I cut myself off to address that. Um, uh, what was it? Oh, gosh. No, I lost track of it. I'm sorry about that. So many things going on in my head here. Attitude of senility, yeah, yeah. The, the, the security guards in South Africa are just ridiculous. Um, they act like they've got some sort of power. Why does Biden have reverse Midas touch? Uh, he doesn't, uh, Robot Trucker. What it is is that the press carry the water for him. You have to understand that um, the people who move in those circles are by and large educated in certain feeder schools, which are full of bigotry and hatred for average Americans. Uh, the very people they profess to care about are the people they have disdain for. You remember Barack Hussein Obama, a person of extreme privilege who was brought up in a sheltered, rich, gentrified life by his um, mother and um, stepfather and lived in Indonesia and Hawaii, tough places to live growing up, exposed to things, went to Harvard Law School, was picked to be editor, not for his talent, but because of his skin color. Um, and then, you know, rode to fame on a fraudulent political campaign in which Jack Ryan was eliminated because of his disgusting, vile ex-wife, Jerry Ryan, seven of nine from Star Trek Voyager. Yeah, um, so illegitimately comes to power, illegitimately becomes president. So Barack Hussein Obama, uh, this person of, um, of um, privilege, is one of these people. All these people go to the same circles, they do the same things, and they have disdain for everyone else. And so... Um, the media are part of that class. They go to these same institutions and they have disdain for the average working person. And so what happens is that um, they paint the wrong picture of America. I mean, look at what they're saying about these so-called white nationalists. CNN breathlessly reports, AP breathlessly reports on 31 white nationalists arrested in Idaho for a misdemeanor of planning a riot. They didn't commit a crime. They've been arrested. It's like the thought. It's like, you know, pre-crime. It's like the movie with Tom Cruise, pre-crime. They, they've not committed a crime, but they're going to be arrested for not committing a crime. But the crime is pre-crime. They haven't actually done anything. They've just been planning things. So not that I disagree with that. Um, my point is that where were the thought police from CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, The New York Times, Chicago Tribune, The Atlanta Constitution Journal, LA Times, where were they, the Gannett media group, where were they when armed thugs carried automatic weapons dressed in black dress to intimidate and threaten people, black gangs in Louisville in July of 2020? They weren't breathlessly reporting on this. They weren't talking about these people who were walking around violating the law or the fact that one of them fired a weapon into a crowd, discharged a weapon which wounded three people. No, no, no. No, that's not what they talked about. They're still talking about Charlottesville. There's no objectivity here. These people have an agenda. They're pushing an agenda. They're seeking to accomplish something, and it's all done for their benefit. Ask yourself this question. Who lost in the pandemic? You and I lost in the pandemic. Job opportunities, jobs, homes foreclosed on, businesses shut down, loved ones die from not receiving proper preventive medical care, denied that because only Rona patients can be in hospitals. Free speech died during the Rona lockdown. Tyranny moved about unabated. What happened to South African ANC members who stole food donations? Nothing. What happened to South African ANC members who stole PPE tender contracts? Nothing. What happened to ANC politicians in South Africa who went to parties and had... What happened to Boris Johnson for holding a Christmas party? Nothing. 
The elites, nothing happens to. They escape scrutiny unless they become too embarrassing and they need a scapegoat. Epstein became a scapegoat, but for years he raped and molested actresses in Hollywood and got away with it with everyone's full knowledge in Hollywood. And then they all feigned ignorance when it came to light, including people like, you know, the clowns who are around Gwyneth Paltrow, who did nothing to protect her. So this is why these vile elite people profited. So who profited specifically from this? testing and diagnostic companies. I just paid 33 pounds, $50 to get a Rona test that was wholly unnecessary in London in order to fly back to America as an American citizen. I had to present a test to prove that I could come in this country. Fuck you, Joe Biden, and fuck the CDC. You're just frauds. You, you created a multi-billion dollar industry for what? On the basis of what? In the meantime, I can't get a prostate exam. Can't schedule that. I can't now, but I couldn't during the pandemic. I can't get a colonoscopy, which I'm overdue for because of the pandemic. My mother died because she couldn't get proper treatment in the hospital. She was forced to get treatment at home, which was ineffective, and cancer spread throughout her body in 90 days. But who profits? The manufacturers of jabs, the politicians who lie about this to get elected and defeat other politicians, the corporations who sell toilet paper, the transportation companies are the ones that have really made out like a fortune. Only now are they suffering with the price and rise, rising price of fuel as a consequence of Biden's stupidity and foolish macroeconomic policies. But DHL, UPS, Deutsche Post, U.S. Postal Service, all of these shippers, and also the, the Dutch shipping company, or not Dutch, the Danish shipping company, all of these shippers around the world made a vast fortune during this pandemic as people shifted from in-person purchases to online purchases, which rely on delivery of goods to individuals rather than to distribution centers and retail locations. They've all made a fortune off this. While other people suffer, exercise centers, leisure centers, bars, restaurants, livelihoods destroyed. Why? How many lives did they save? Any? How many lives did they cost? Well, here in Pennsylvania, we know that three quarters of the people who died in the early stage of this were all in nursing homes as a consequence of Tom Wolf's unlawful, unconstitutional, violent, malicious action of putting positive people into nursing homes. And Rachel Levine, who took her mother out of a nursing home when she knew that infected people were being sent there and put her in a hotel. And no political consequences whatsoever. Now, Rachel Levine, the vile, disgusting troglodyte, has the equivalent of a military rank, an admiral, Never done jack shit to defend this nation, but a public health service officer and appointed as an admiral. It's vile and disgusting. Per one just gave 60 rand, I ran <laughs> for the prostate examination. It's going to have to have a few more zeros in front of it in order to pay for a prostate exam here. <laughs> That's funny, Per one. You're too funny, brother. <laughs> Traditional lockdowns, the ability of individuals to rest their oral health issues along with other. Yeah, that's where I was going. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you, Marlo. You brought me back to the topic. Uh, okay, so, you know, here's the thing that's what I want to say. So, as a retiree from active service, the reason I get a retirement check is not because the government's generous. No, no. The reason the military retirees in America get a retirement check isn't a reward for their service. No, no. Let me squelch that right now. The reason we get it is a clause that's seldom invoked, something that rarely occurs but does occur particularly in times of conflict. In the Gulf War, it happened. During the Iraq War, it happened. What it is, is that you're given a retirement check because you are still an officer and you're still an enlisted member of the armed forces. I have an ID card that says I'm a member of the U.S. Army, retired, but a member of the U.S. Army. I can be recalled to active duty and have to put a uniform back on and serve this nation at any time at, at the discretion of the federal government. And I have no say in that whatsoever. So therefore, I'm paid a salary. Now, ostensibly, you would think that the people who are on the string to be called back to active duty would still get free health care because you're part of the total force. Well, we used to get free health care. We don't anymore. Now we have to pay for it, which is bullshit. Um, but what's even worse is that we get no dental care whatsoever. Now, on active duty, we get free dental care. And why do you get that? Because the military wants you not to have halitosis, bad breath, because they don't want you to have rotten teeth? No, it's because dental hygiene is critically important to your overall health. People with poor dental hygiene tend to have astronomically high rates of heart disease and heart attacks, among other things. Dental hygiene is critical to one's health. The cleaner your teeth, the cleaner your mouth, the healthier you are, generally speaking. Marlo, tell me if I've got this wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
People who take care of their teeth, people who floss regularly, people who brush their teeth, people who keep their teeth from tooth decay are better off. The last thing you need is a soldier in combat with a toothache who's in agony, who's distracted when terrorists are shooting at him or the enemy shooting at him or they have to drop a missile or make a decision. That's why we have free dental health care. But we offer no dental care to our retirees. The only dental care, health care I've gotten two year and a half years since I retired was when I had pain in this jaw and I thought I might have a cavity. Instead, it was more likely me grinding my teeth and putting pressure on this molar or on, the, on this jawbone at night, which was impacting and putting pressure on the nerve. I went, not a single cavity in my mouth. It cost me over $200 for the visit. So that's um, 3,000 Rand to find out there was nothing wrong out of my pocket. That should have been free as a retired member of the military forces. So yeah, yeah. Heart disease, depression, blood pressure, cascading effects. So Marlo, I'm spot on, am I not? I'm spot on correct. If you want healthy population, start with dentistry. Start with dentistry. If people have healthy oral hygiene, then the rest of it is a piece of cake. Think about it, folks. Think about it. True story. No, you thought only the British lacked dental plans. Most people don't have dental plans. Yep. Marla says spot on. Yeah, no, exactly. Now, am I a medical professional? No. Am I a dentist? No. I'm just a well-informed intelligence analyst and human being who has an interest in all fields and knows that life is more complicated than simply, you know, go on a diet. All right? You want money for the tooth mechanic too? <laughs> It's me again. I haven't seen you in a few days. I hope you're well. Uh, I hope business is well for you too. Uh, yes, sure. More money for the tooth fairy. <laughs> I could use tooth cleaning. A teeth cleaning, yeah. Do you think veterans are unappreciated? Uh, robot trucker, um, it depends. If you're talking about South Africa, I think genuine veterans are highly underappreciated. I think veterans in the UK are wildly underappreciated. I think veterans in Germany are completely neglected. I think Americans in America, by and large, are liked and respected in a general sense by the population. And in most of the country are genuinely appreciated by our citizens, but not by the government. The Veterans Administration has a long history of callous care and neglect for veterans, which was corrected under, it began under Barack Hussein Obama, so I'll give Obama credit for that. But Donald Trump accelerated that and made it better. Uh, the horror stories I've heard about veterans who spent years trying to get their disability approved and reviewed. Uh, fortunately for me, I left when Donald Trump was still president before he left office. And I submitted my paperwork uh, just before Christmas, December 17th of 2019. And in late January of 2020, they called me from the Veterans Administration for setting up my physical and my examinations for disability. And then we started the second, first week of February. And by middle of February, I completed most of the examinations. Uh, they sent me a letter on March 11th telling me that I was I was disabled veteran and I would receive a percentage of the disabled pay, which is not much, by the way. It's not very much. Um, I couldn't survive off that pay. Um, but it does compensate me for injuries. And um, basically, technically, I have free care from the Veterans Administration should I choose to take it. But I still can get my care from the U.S. Army and pay the insurance for that for now. So anyway. Um, that's insane. High cost for dentistry, you say. When my son came to visit UK, he asked to see oral hygienist to get teeth clean. This is cheaper here. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, a teeth cleaning here is going to cost you two, three hundred dollars, depending on the dentist. And the reason for that is because um, the care is scarce. It's not enough of it. The first thing. Second thing is because a lot of people put off dental care until more work needs to be done. Case in point. Uh, and then also because of the interference in the dental. Um, industry by the government and which distorts outcomes. It all plays a role. What benefits do veterans get in civil society? Well, Robot, a lot of uh, places give discounts. The local Arby's here, not too far down the road from where I live, the manager there gives me a 35% discount whenever I get food there. Thank you, Arby's. I really appreciate that. Most places will give veterans a 10, 15% discount. Some will give more. Uh, I was, uh, where was I at? In Dallas. Uh, I was in Dallas. No, uh, yeah, Fort, went to Fort Worth. I went to the Cowboy Museum and I walked in. There was an admission fee. It's $5, not much. Uh, and I said, do you offer a discount for veterans? She said, well, can I see an ID card? And I showed her, just admission for you is free, sir. Thank you for your service. That was very kind. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm able to live better than I could on the income that I have because of the generosity of people who offer discounts. And we also have something called Vet Ticks. It's a private organization that takes donations from people, donate tickets to concerts and sporting events and uh, comedy clubs and things. 
things like that. Anybody that has excess tickets, sometimes teams have extra tickets. They just want more people to come. They'll donate it. It goes in there. Uh, it's all done through Ticketmaster, which is kind of a lame, but that's how it's done. Uh, but Ticketmaster, I go in and I always pay a fee, but the money is used to support the website and support the activities of, tit of vet ticks. Uh, vet ticks. But for instance, I went to Maroon 5 concert a couple years ago and the tickets were free. I paid, I think, 11 or 14 dollars the fee to vet ticks which they use to support their operations but the ticket was donated and i got in free as a veteran it's pretty cool um there's other things out there but folks in civil society can be very generous to veterans in america it's nice that then people have offered to buy me meals and, and I, I always try to refuse that politely um, because a lot of people doing it have lower incomes than i do so i don't really i feel kind of guilty there dental care in thailand is the cheapest and a very high standard but you're going you're going to say you're not a... <laughs> Marlo has to head out. I have to head out too. I got a uh, Ronaldo at the top of the hour, so I'm going to take a break here. Made an appointment to have a dental checkup to clean tomorrow, but now I have a postponed daughter needs me. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, so that's just some of the stuff. It's, it's crazy that vets don't even get free cleanings. No, we don't get free cleanings. We have free care. They don't have enough dentists. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, Biden will send billions to the Ukraine. $40 billion for the Ukraine, but no dental care for veterans. Not just veterans. I mean, because we have, we have tens of millions of veterans, but retirees, people who devoted their entire adult life to supporting and defending this nation. And I didn't just do it for 20 years, which is what you have to do to get a retirement check. I did it for 36 and a half years and would have done it for longer if the law had allowed me. But I ran up against the statutory limit. 36 and a half years, and I don't get free dental care. I don't get free eye care. I don't get free eye care. Anyway, all right, folks, that's it. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to the Conscious Caracol. Appreciate it. Hopefully you can show up tomorrow with Rob and I. It's time for me to take a break and go on Ronaldo. Smee again, thank you for being here and everyone else. Uh, your vets, our vets get nothing. I know that, L, my five pence. I'm quite well aware of that, whether it's the UK or South Africa. I'm very aware of that. Yeah, so I'm grateful to be from a real country that respects veterans. It wasn't always this way in America. When I went to the VFW and I was talking to a Vietnam veteran, he's talking about how life was when he came back from Vietnam, and I know what it was like. It was shameful and disgraceful the way that veterans, especially in a conscript army in which they had no choice for the most part, they were drafted and sent over there by the political regime and then treated like crap by American citizens when they came back. And, and some of them betrayed the veterans themselves, people like, um, what's his name, John Kerry betrayed veterans in their service with his lies about Vietnam. Anyway, folks, thanks a lot. Cheers. We'll catch you here. Well, catch me on Ronaldo shortly. We'll see if we can't get an audience over there on Ronaldo's program at the top of the hour. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the super chats. Thank you, Janet, for that one. Thank you for the other super chats here. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. I'll decide on night owls after Ronaldo. Wednesdays are my busy day, folks. I've got radio tonight, so maybe there'll be a night owls. But so few views on the program, it's not much a motivator. But there may be a night owls. We'll see how Ronaldo goes. Cheers. <laughs>